welcome to The Love Zone. This is your girl Yvonne Michelle and I'm here with my wonderful host this evening, Ace Got Talk. If you remember last week, we were talking about the languages of love. And we've been looking at these subjects over the last week and previous shows. So for those of you who are unfamiliar with the languages of love, I'm going to say to you, go back and look over those shows so that you can get a breast of what we have been talking about. So today is a new day. And we had thought, we were told by the author of the book about love languages that there were six. Today, we're going to introduce the seventh. Seven is the number of completion. And as you heard last week, if you were listening to the show, my host, my co-host Ace said that he was going to bring something to the table. Well, today, the king, he said last week, he is a king and he is a king as I am a queen. So today, King Ace is going to bring the seventh language of love to bring completion to the whole thing so that you and I are able to communicate in a higher, better way and raise our frequency when we are in our relationships. So let me welcome my co-host, my friend, Ace Got Talk. Good evening, my darling. How are you doing? I'm wonderful. I just want to start today's show by saying you look absolutely stunning. Thank you. Absolutely stunning, Thank my you. darling. You've just brightened up the whole Media Net TV studio with your <laughs> presence. So thanks for joining me again. So we're going to chop it up tonight, right? OK, we're doing it. All right, so um, as you said, love languages, there was mm. six in total. Mm -hmm. I believe the author wrote five and then... And then added... He added a sixth one. Now, you know, Ace Got Talk, I'm very, very honest. I wear my heart on my sleeve. And as... As all of my previous ex-girlfriends can confirm, I wasn't aware of none of the six languages <laughs> <laughs> um, up until two weeks ago when I met you. Okay. And it was, it's been quite intriguing, just looking at the languages of love and reflecting on you know, pre previous relationships and how I communicate my language of love and how my partners have communicated their language of love. And looking at the differences and how, you know, the dynamics mm. that 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 entails, so to speak. So, it's been a very, very, very interesting journey of self-discovery for myself. I mean, that's the field we're in, isn't it? Absolutely. It, it, we're in the self-development business. But sitting down and reflecting on the languages that the author had made reference to, mm -hmm. I personally feel that. He's missed a trick. I'm getting comfortable because I want to hear this. And I know you, you, you've encouraged the, the audience to go back and look at our previous shows just to really get their teeth into not only the five to six languages of love, but how we dissected the languages because yeah. that is important as well, mm. our interpretation and, and our spin on, on the languages. But... Just going through them quickly, just the titles. Yes. The first language of love is affirmation. Mm -hmm. The second is... We have gifts. Gifts. Yeah. The third, the third is... Uh, acts of service. Yeah. Um, quality time. Yeah. And we have... Um, touch. Touch. Uh -huh. And last week, mm -hmm. it's distance. It's distance. The distance. And as we have discussed over the previous weeks that all of those different areas in terms of how we communicate are important. Absolutely. And some of those are more important to others than others and, and vice versa. Like, remember, I looked at my language of love and out of the six that the author identified, I would personally say, I'm big on quality time, mm -hmm. but it doesn't necessarily mean that my, my partner, so to speak, that might not be top of their list. That's right. 
So we looked at the different dynamics and how those play out. Mm -hmm. And like I said, I believe the, the author, although those love languages are very important, all six of them are important, I believe one is missed. So tonight, ladies and gentlemen, Ace Got Talk, I'm going to give you the Ace Got Talk seventh language of love. Um, I just want to shout out to everybody that's listening at home and I want to um, thank you guys for joining us once again. Over the last few weeks, you guys at home have been absolutely amazing with the comments and the interaction and the feedback that you've been giving us, you know, while we've been, you know, discussing these topics in a very, you know, open and respectful manner. So I hope that continues tonight. And guys, I really want you guys to get involved tonight with your comments because it's all about you guys you know we're, we're just here to open up the conversation and facilitate the, the, the conversation and it's for you guys to so tell us what you think how do you feel and how does the languages that we put out there how do how 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 do, how do those languages how do they fit into your relationship do you agree with us do you disagree with us have you i put this out a few weeks ago have you got a language that you think is not on the list that should be included on the list send us your emails um, info at realtalkradio.co.uk if you've got a love language that you feel is missing. So, you're quiet tonight, Yvonne. You're quiet. I'm you're just quiet. letting you talk. You're quiet. I, I'm not going to interrupt while you're talking. I'm really excited to hear about the love language that you've got because, guys, we haven't discussed this. Ace has made it that I don't know. So I'm waiting to hear just like you guys. So I'm waiting with bated breath. I want to hear and discuss what this seventh love language is. I'm really, really anxious to know. And I'm glad you pointed that out, Yvonne, because as we were going through the six languages of love, once again, I wasn't even familiar with the, 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 the book prior mm. to um, the conversations me and you had. And every week when you revealed a particular language, my reaction was quite authentic. Yeah, absolutely quite honest as well and likewise um you have no idea, no idea. Um, but the funny thing is before, i'm gonna i'm gonna drop it like it's hot but it's funny because all week i've been speaking to you know various friends of mine etc females and they've all been like what is it what are you gonna say Ace? what are you gonna say what are you gonna say mm -hmm. and you know so a lot of people are sitting down in anticipation waiting for that where's he gonna go with it mm -hmm. all right so i think it's about time i'm gonna hit you guys with it ace got talk this, this show's all about, this show's called The Love Zone, and we've started up by talking about the love languages, and Ace got talk big and serious. I'm gonna put out there what I believe is the seventh language of love, and then I wanna discuss this language in a very mature and open fashion, because once I give you the language, I believe it's not only just a language, but this language can be actually dissected into sections, depending on, and we'll go into that, whether you're in a relationship or not. So here goes. Ace got talk. In my opinion, the seventh language of love, which we haven't discussed yet, mm -mm. and it wasn't it wasn't mentioned in any of the six languages of love. The seventh language of love is sex. One hundred percent sex, and you can be in a relationship with somebody, but you commun you, the way you communicate the seventh language is completely different. And I'm going to give you some examples, and then I want you to chop it up. And, and, I, and I want to try and keep it, I want to focus it today on one particular area of that seventh language, and that is long-term relationships. Because when, you, um, when we talk about the language of love, number seven, and we talk about sex, if you're in a long-term relationship, once again, how that language is communicated is completely different to, say, people who might be dating or, you know, in, in more casual relationships. So we'll move on to that. But I want to I just give you an example. Mm -hmm. And I want to give the listeners an example to make myself clear. Then I want to throw it over to you for you to, to comment. Okay. So after last week's show um, with myself and yourself, it's funny how everybody watches the show and has something to say about it. I had a, converse, well, a friend of mine came over. He's 59 years old. Mm -hmm. He's been married for 27 years. And it took us about three hours to get through last week's show, watching it, because he was watching it and then stopping and pausing and watching it and stopping it and pausing and talking about his life and his marriage and his relationship. And I found out so much about this person. I've known him for years. Mm -hmm. 
But in just one hour of him sitting down watching the show, our show last week, I found that so much about his life. Right. Because as we were talking, he was pausing the dialogue and making reference to his own life. Right. And okay. I want to share this with the listeners because it's important. He's been married 27 years. Mm -hmm. He said the first 14 years of his marriage, mm -hmm. he was happy. You know, in terms of the relationship, he said every part of the relationship is perfect. Okay. You know, in you know how a, mm -hmm. a good functioning relationship works. But he said 14 years into the relationship, sex didn't become that important to his partner. Right. But it still was very important to him. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, the way that relationship went is he, he, brought, he brought it to his partner's attention. Mm -hmm. And she, it, I, I don't want to go into the crux of that yeah. right now, but I've, I've, I want to highlight the point that whether it be long, long marriages mm -hmm. or even couples that might be in boyfriend, girlfriend relationship mm -hmm. for five, six, seven years, the language mm -hmm. of how they communicate sexually can change over a period of time and that can be devastating to a lot of relationships mm. i'm going to open up i'm going to give you the chance to speak now would you what's your what's your thoughts and comments okay so okay do you know what i have to say i thought i i thought what could it be what could it be and i thought the only thing it could really be is sex and and so okay so sex being a, a language of love yes because when you love somebody, you are intimate with them. But intimacy is not about sex. You've, you've jumped ahead of the gun because there's <laughs> no, another no, two. No, there's no, another no, two. You okay. jumped way ahead all of right, the gun. Right, we're right, going to so. unpack okay. it, but carry okay. on. Okay, yeah. so, so it's, it's, not, it's not about sex. But what happens is, is that when you start a relationship, you go on a journey. And this journey is not just one person, it's two. So it's easy when you're on a journey by yourself, it's easy to just go along, plod along and just think about you. But when you're on a journey with two people, you then have to start thinking about the other person. Now, one of the questions I would have asked your friend was why? What was the reason why the sex changed? Because there are many reasons why sex changes in a relationship. Whether the first, whether it's the first 10 years, five years, two years, whatever, there's many reasons why a relationship will change. And if it's an, if, if somebody's got married and they're, I don't know, 30, 40, and then they get, and then they have this lull at 14 years, then you've got to think, well, why isn't it as important to the other person? So this is a male come to you, so the person is a female. The female goes through many, many changes in her body. For, for, I'm not even thinking about anything other than a normal, happy relationship. But a woman goes through stuff. We all, guys, ladies, ladies of you who are, are listening, you will know that as we get older, we go through changes. And those changes are not always easy. And so it takes a lot of understanding, which we touched on last week, for the partner to now understand. But it takes communication to work that out. It really does. And communication at its core. The sex cannot be more important than the relationship. I'm going to say that again. The sex cannot be more important than the relationship itself. The relationship must come first. And that's why it's important to build your relationship over the years. It's important. It's like building a wall. It takes bricks. You need to build it so that if and when these things happen, and this happen, it happens to men too, because men lose their libido. Men are not able to get, uh, they have erectile dysfunction. Lots of reasons things why sex changes so th for me i would fundamentally have to ask the first question is what were the changes and why that's my first thing in in going through that because it could be many reasons but i want to just say to those who are going through um relationship issues in regards to sex the first thing that you guys need to do really and truly is to sit down in a calm manner and have a conversation and listen you know it, it's so easy to talk some people say oh it's, it's hard to talk but actually the easiest thing to do is to listen because you get knowledge when you listen 
So I would say that the first thing in hearing what you've said about your friend, to help your friend, that would have been the first suggestion that I made. Interesting. Thank you very much for that. So I want to run through a couple of more examples. Mm -hmm. And we just play with it, because like I said, this language, everybody communicates it differently. Yeah. So the first example I'll give you is the married man who's been in a long-term marriage and after a certain amount of years, sex doesn't become as important to his partner. And that has caused some very serious issues in the relationship. Mm -hmm. right. Now we talk about love languages, right? Mm -hmm. And we communicate those languages differently, right? Well. Let's just talk about uh, two, single couple, two single people, a man and a woman. Mm -hmm. They come together, but one is very sexually active mm -hmm. and one just genuinely isn't. Mm -hmm. Now, they genuinely like each other. There's, you know, interest there, mm -hmm. you know, but the way they communicate in that department is completely different. What would you say to those, that, that, that couple? Well, it, 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 I would say to this couple, it's going to be different anyway. It's, it's going to, because if they're not in a long-term relationship, then maybe it's not... All right, sorry, let me give you a better okay. example. Okay. Whether the relationship is long or not, I know a lot of couples, let me make it more clearer. Okay. I know a lot of couples that, I don't even know married couples, mm -hmm. that the wife is very active, mm -hmm. but the, the man, he's just not as active in that mm -hmm. department. So, they, so uh, the other six languages, they might communicate fine, but that seventh language, they're communicating completely differently. And I know that happens a lot in mm. relationships, that one partner can be quite more f active than the other, mm -hmm. and there's an, there's an imbalance there. Mm -hmm. Right. So talking about the, the languages of love, right? So what you're saying to me is they're having issues. One wants sex, one doesn't, maybe. Right? Is that what you basically say? One wants it more than the other. Mm -hmm. In a relationship, there is that old word that we hear, which is compromise, right? Do we hear that word? Compromise. And so you have to get to a position where you are willing, because if, if, if we're talking about love, we're talking about relationship, we're talking about really being in deeply, depthly consumed in love with another person. So if that's the case, you must be able to communicate and work this through. There are many couples, well, my, auntie's, my auntie's been married for over 50 years, right? They would have had some of those issues, but they work through those issues. They talk together. They talk together, they work through their issues, all right? So for me, you know, we can't just look at it, well, one wants it, one doesn't. If this is a true, loving relationship then both parties have to sit down and hold a conversation but what normally happens is one gets frustrated with the other and then one will go and do things and compromise maybe the relationship that is not the uh, the answer you know looking the grass is not always greener on the on the other side we have to get to a place now where we are actually focused on our relationship, where we are giving in our relationship and we are listening. Because some of the times when, especially as women, let me just talk for the women, especially as women, we, f we don't feel like we're heard. And when we don't feel like we're heard and our partner comes on to us, we're not interested because we, don't, we feel that that's the only thing that they want. But if you as the man, and I don't want the guys to shoot me down to say I'm being one-sided, I'm just going from the experiences from what I'm used to, because I work with women, okay? So from the, from the other perspective, the man now may feel that you know, he's not getting it from his partner enough. But you've got to think, you know, your partner is not a workhorse. And like I said, there could be many, many reasons why and it's for us to work those. It's never, ever going to be as clear cut as they just don't want to have sex. It's mm. never. There's always an underlined reason. And it's to work through that. Yeah. And that's, that's my thing. I think the other love languages help. For instance, I'm an act of service person. And let me just bring it to me. I'm an act of service person. And I could be with somebody and t to get. I don't want to give away too much secret about my personal life, but to, to, for me to feel that 
that sexual kind of way. It depends on how my partner is treating me, what he's saying to me, how he's looking at me, how, or how he's interacting with me. So, for instance, if I'm, I work, I'm busy, I do lots and lots of things, and my partner's helping me to do lots and lots of do things, and I'm getting those things done, it's bringing a, a matter of relaxation to my life. It's bringing something to me that is going to make me look on my man and say, hmm, no, I don't know, you know? And then it would be easier, and I may be, I don't want to use the word freer, but I'd be more freer to express that side of me because I'm relaxed. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I think that you work in all of the other aspects and try to work with your partner, but add in the listening. And I, you know, I feel that some, some partners don't listen as well as talk. They want to talk, 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 talk but don't actually listen to what the issues are. So, you know, sex is a big thing, and it is a big thing in relationships. It's massive. But it cannot, and I've got to say this, it cannot be more important than the relationship itself because we are human beings, and our bodies are the, are the way that they are. And sometimes the body works, and sometimes it doesn't. Women know that when they get to a certain age, their libido drops if they're going through menopause or anything like that, or after a pregnancy. They do not, do not feel like having sex. And on the reciprocal side of the man, the man has to understand that, you know, she's not always going to be up for it. She's not. But what the men need to understand is when they get to a certain age, Interesting. Yeah, it, it can go the same way. We can get a little bit flopsy lopsy. And then, you know, then it's the other way around. Do you see what I'm saying? The so it's give and take. Okay, so let's start to unpack this a little bit more. Because okay. Ace got talk. I said the I said the seventh lang language of love is sex. Is sex. Mm -hmm. And just through the conversations I've been having with different people, I realised that for some people that's more important than others. And I wanted to look at the frequency. So okay. we looked at that from a, a, a married perspective and also from, you know, maybe more single, casual dating perspective. The next element of this love language that I want to just start to unpick is, you touched on it earlier, but intimacy. Mm. Or as I would have referred to it, connection. Mm -hmm. Because when we talk about sex, and I've, I've tried to explain this um, <laughs> previously, people just look at sex as a lustful act. Mm -hmm. And they don't really ever look at sex as something quite spiritual. Mm -hmm. And quite something quite enlightening, you know. And I think it when you you can't just it's like exercise. Se the word exercise. Exercise is a broad word. Mm -hmm. You know, running is exercise. Mm -hmm. You know, skipping is exercise. Yeah. You know, swimming is a form of exercise. So when we talk about sex, it really depends how you, how 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 you um um you unpick you you you, you unpick. And how you interpret right, yeah. what you're doing. So I want to just touch on in intimacy. Okay. Well, intimacy. Let's let's break down that word. In to me see, right? So this is where you are looking for a deeper, higher connection. You are looking into. You know, we say that the windows are the, the, the sorry, the eyes are the windows of our soul. And when you look into your own eyes, you can see yourself, if you look deeply enough, at your core. And so what that means is when we reciprocate that, it means that we're able to see the core in our partner. All right? So we want to be intimate with our partner. So intimacy is not, let me make it clear, is not sex. It's far deeper than sex. Intimacy goes way, way deeper than sex. Because people have sex every day, and sex doesn't mean a lot to many people. Now, I know that some of you who are in long-term relationships will find that hard to believe, but actually, sex doesn't mean much to some people. Some people are able to just have the, the act of sex and move on, right? And some people who are listening at home will understand that because they've been with a partner that they thought it was something, and then they never see the person again. And I know that many people have experienced that. So that's sex. That is 
sex in its, in its harshest, coarsest form. But we're talking about intimacy. We're talking about love. We're talking about looking into the soul of that person that you are with and, the vib and vibrating at a higher level where you two are entwined. Now, if you go back into, um, I think it's episode two of Love Languages, um, we do touch on intimacy and I do give a broader, a broader inf um, explanation of intimacy. And I, do you remember when I was showing, doing the hand movements of what it meant? So I want those of you who have not um, seen that to go back and watch that so you get an idea and there's a reason why I tell you to go back is because this show is not long enough for me to go through everything so intimacy many times I'm just going to do this real quick mm -hmm. illustration so many times we have relationships and it feels like this it feels like you're hitting your head against a brick wall. You're, you're in love, you like the person, you're doing well, but you can't get into the person. You can't get that feeling of, of connection, of knowing that person at a deeper level. What we're looking for with intimacy is where we, instead of here, where we feel like we're bucking heads, or where we're not, we really don't have much in common now, really. It may appear that we have something in common, but we don't have much in common. But what we want to do is gel with that person in every way. And that takes communication, which is what we've been talking Brilliant. about, right? Brilliant. Brilliant. It takes communication at a higher level. So it's not the, you know, I like you, you like me, this is what you're saying, let's, let's go and do it. It's, it's a deeper thing than that. We, we want to connect so we actually are forming and coming together and building. And can you see that? If you see that, you will see that is equal. Absolutely amazing. On both sides. Absolutely right? amazing. And it functions. Watch the movement. This is how intimacy is. You're able to move, you're able to flex, you're able to do far more when you have that into me see relationship. And how does one how does one attain that to because I'm sure there are people out there that have probably amazing sexual relationships, mm -hmm. but still never really had that, that intimate connection with that person. Do you understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Because there's, there's, a, there's a difference between uh, an amazing, lustful act mm -hmm. and being deeply <laughs> spiritually connected to somebody. Does mm -hmm. it make sense? Yeah. So how does, if someone's, you know, whether they be in a long-term you know, marriage or whether they're boyfriend and girlfriend, a couple, they want to go deeper, they want to connect. How would you suggest when they, they, they achieve from going like that mm -hmm. to going like that. How do we do Strip that? Strip it back and be honest. Be yourself. You have to be your authentic self. You have to be real and not be afraid to say the things that you think the other person doesn't want to hear. You really have to. And I say this because I've had a client, right? Client was having issues. In he, and it was a male, by the way, uh, a friend of mine, having issues in his relationship. And the issues were he was having erectile dysfunction. He didn't know why. And his partner was becoming more and more frustrated because he wasn't able to perform, mm. right? And so he spoke to me about this. And I'm saying, well, why are you speaking to me about it? And he's like, well, he can talk to me about these things. And he doesn't know why. He didn't feel embarrassed to tell me, but he felt embarrassed to tell his wife. Mm. And so through a course of talking and some therapies, we made it so that he was able and felt able to talk to his wife. Once he talked to his wife, do you know what his wife did? His wife said, okay, babes, we're gonna go to the doctor, we're gonna go and see what's really wrong. And he, when he came back and he said to me, do you know what, my wife's with me, she's supporting me. But he, it was actually diabetes. Amazing. Right? That was, the, that was the issue. It was diabetes. Once his diabetes was under control, they're happily married, still going, doing what they do in love. But because they were able to connect in a different way, you have to be honest. You've got to be willing to say the thing that you know your partner may not be willing to hear. You've got to, be, you've got to go there. So you break down that wall. You go behind that black curtain, like we like to say, and you are authentically honest and true. Interesting. That's what quite... That's interesting, especially the fact that it turned out to be diabetes. Uh, I remember sharing a story a few weeks ago about a friend of mine who 
was thinking about splitting up with her partner mm. because the two, it was a holiday romance. They, they met on holiday, you know, it was really exciting, came back, sat in for a few months and then it kind of died down and she wasn't sure if he was into her as much mm -hmm. as when they first met. And same thing I said to him, talk to him, mm. tell him how you feel, you know, see where it goes. And after having a conversation, she laid her cards on the table and he started to, you know, he, he, he was honest with her, I think he'd gone through a few work issues, etc. Mm -hmm. so that's why he hadn't really been himself, but they managed to patch that up and now they're in a very good place. So, the six languages we covered of um, languages of love, we talked heavily about communication, communication, mm. communication, yeah. understanding the other person's language a lot better. I know that had I known the, the six languages of love a, lot, lo a long time ago, it might have changed a few things in mm -hmm. a few relationships that I had been in. But equally, number seven, sex. Sex. It's something that we tend to do, mm -hmm. but we might not necessarily a lot of time discussing it yeah. and I think it's fair to say you be in a relationship with somebody for years mm -hmm. I'm talking a sexual relationship mm -hmm. but never really have certain conversations yeah that's very true M most most couples let me say this not most but there are some couples I don't want to generalize there are some couples who never discuss sex never ever discuss sex they spend more, we spend more time doing it than talking about it. And this is something, you, do, you know, do you know how intimate it can be when you talk about sex with your partner? Do you realise how much you can bring that person into your own energy space just by that conversation? 100%. And I know that we, we started off with the communication, but we will start to dig down into how you start to communicate, how you start to communicate those languages with your partner. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Because, example, I know we're going to start, you always say, Ace, don't give nothing away. Ace, don't give nothing away. <laughs> you know, but we like to let the people them know why I can't because there's a method to the madness. There's a, there's a method to the madness and, you know, it, it's just little pieces of the pu puzzle, little pieces of the puzzle, little pieces of the puzzle, and eventually we start to paint the bigger picture. Mm -hmm. So we start off with the languages of love, and then we're going to start to have some adult, mature conversations around things like fetish, fetish, fetishes, um, swinging, um, bondage, etc. And it just leads on from the point you made, Yvonne, about communicating because you could be in a, I could be in a relationship with you mm -hmm. and I don't know half the things that you might be into mm -hmm. because we never had that conversation so we can't explore those we can't explore and, and, and share those experiences mm -hmm. together because mm -hmm. sometimes people can be quite proud or quite stush and mm -hmm. you know and but I mean give you an example the other day when we mentioned a show we had planned mm -hmm. for a few weeks mm -hmm. and no well you mentioned it amongst a, a group of your female friends right yeah. And just in that conversation, you were quite shocked at the, the confessions that came out in the room to oh, yeah. what people had um, hidden in their cupboards. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, so um, I'm 100% agreement with you. So when we talk about the language of sex, we're not just talking about the physical. Ace got talk because it's my language, number seven. I'm not just referring to the physical aspect of sex. Mm. I'm actually referring to the spiritual Mm -hmm. aspect as well i the connecting mm -hmm. yeah that like you said that intimacy mm -hmm. but also the dialogue being able to have a conversation with your partner mm -hmm. about what you like might like and dislike and and you know, like, mm -hmm. might want to try new experiences etc how do you feel about that everyone i feel it's something that needs to be spoken about i think in i think it was program two or it was actually three I spoke about I kind of went over glinted over it I spoke about when we go into relationships I, and I specifically went to the men and I said to the men when you are in a new relationship don't take the old relationship in the new relationship and what I mean by that is many times in my experience and from talking to couples men if they are able to satisfy a woman, the previous woman, in a certain way, and she's happy with that, they have a formula. So they know this will make this person have an orgasm, right? 
And so maybe that, that, that relationship ends, and then they move on to another relationship. But they take the same formula from the last relationship into the new relationship, thinking that what the other lady liked, this lady will like. And what I'm saying is, we are all different. And you have to discover and learn about your partner's body. You have to learn about the way that they communicate. Now, if you say to somebody, and you, you, you are in a relationship, and you say, are you OK? And the person says, I'm fine. And you know by the tone of voice it's different. You know their body language is different. You know that they are not fine, right? But yet still, we will just take that on board. Oh, they, they said they're fine, so they're fine. No, this is about intimacy because you will know. And so you will know how to talk to your partner to get the, the, to the real core of the issue. And this is, this is what we're talking about. This is, it's communication at a higher level that you know. It's like there are certain times we haven't even known each other that long, but there are times that you will know just from us being around each other and talking, 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 you will know that something's not right with me yeah. and vice versa. Yeah, can I just come in there? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, thank you to everybody that's been commenting. Um, I see all the comments coming through, and God bless you guys. Thanks for the comments. Shout out to Valerie, yeah, my darling. Yeah. Um, me and Yvonne done a little um, Insta live earlier, yes, didn't we? A little did. warm up. and. The conversation started to get warm, and you know we 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 just caught it. And and um, Sweetie Valerie's asked um, to t if we should we could touch on the the, the topic of polygamy. Okay. Today. Okay. Well, well, I'm just going to give the listeners. I'm just going to give the listeners a little inkling. Mm -hmm. We are going to touch on it, but we're going to do a whole show on it. Like I said, just what we're doing is little pieces of the puzzle, and eventually it will paint the bigger picture. So we started off with the six languages. Language number seven being sex. And now from that dialogue, we're going to open up and talk yeah. about, yeah. we'll do a show on polygamy. Because when we talk about the language of love, sex as well, in different relationships, that looks completely different to different couples. I'll give you an example, because um, this is why I want to open up the conversation. Swinging. I know couples that happily, they're couples that have been married for years, and they'll get dressed on a Sunday or Friday night, and they'll go to a swinging party, and they will swing all night long with other people, and then they go home arm in arm, and then they get back on with their week. So um, when Yvonne refers to taking intimacy to a, another level, that's a frequency they've taken mm. it, it to. And um, at, from a child growing up, I've, I've, I've watched several of my families, my, sorry, my friends, um, grow up in families where you know, their father had maybe four wives, and I've seen those families function quite well. I know me and yourself, Yvonne, we've, we've, Yvonne's got a lot, a lot, her own opinions on that subject, right? Right. Um, um, uh, uh, what, what, was the, what was the comment you said to me the other day? Well, me wa, me wa four man to. Yeah. Let me just touch on yeah, that. Go on. Because Ace was like saying, you know, there's nothing wrong with a man having four women, blah, blah, blah. blah Excuse blah. me. I didn't say that. I was so, giving you rational reason. reason. Yeah, I was rational saying, reason. Well, it was right, a bit okay. more than, right. Basically, that's what you were saying. <laughs> so I was just saying, well, if the man is having, if my man wants to come to me with, and present me with four other women, then I'm going to present myself with five, four other men because I can. That's what I said, because I can. And it stirred up another conversation, which we won't go into today, but we will bring that in, because what you guys need to understand is we talk on these things, and we talk on a level on these things um, when we know, when we know what we're going to talk about. We talk on a level. So, but my thing is, I am, the way that I see things is that, you know, if a man is coming to me, we are equal. We are equal. I'm a, I'm a queen, he's a king. And so what's good for him is good for me. So if he's happy for me, because I also, also said, I don't like to share. I don't like to share a biscuit. Right. Let me say, I'll share knowledge, but when it comes to certain things that I hold dear to me, I don't want to sh share. And I don't see oh, why I should. Just, that's just, just, just on, that, t t on that note, and we're not going to go into that today, because we've got enough on a different from Sonic, yeah, um, and she said, <laughs> a, a, a was saying, you know, I, w I explained mathematically, because it's, it's got to do the maths, I explained that there are more men, sorry, there are more women on the plan planet to man men at the moment, that's a fact, there's more women mm -hmm. than men, so um, men, we're outnumbered by women, and if every man marries one woman, mm -hmm. there's going to be a shortage, I then explained mathematically that we've got um, a lot of men that are incarcerated, and you've got 
other a lot of men that have other preferences mm -hmm. uh, other than woman and then you've got a lot of different trans this and trans that and trans everything in between so with all of that going on we and this is why we need to have these open conversations okay, it's yeah. about well if the percentage of women to men is x and every man married one woman what would all the other women on the planet do that um haven't got a husband so these are these are these are interesting conversations that we can actually examine from a perspective of actually um rationality as opposed to just you know um you know, a uh, 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 greed. You know, so it's not it's not greed. I'm just looking at the numbers from a from a from a mathematical point of view and saying, well, how how do we pattern this one out? But yeah, so these are the kind of things that we're going to be go, going about, into. Yeah, but we're not going to be talking uh, about it yeah, today because yeah. it will take us off, uh, off, off, off script. script. Yeah. But what we do want to do, we acknowledge what um, messages and comments that you're making, and so we're going to make uh, like a, a catalogue of them, so we're able to <laughs> discuss the things that you want to discuss openly and in a really uh, open and frank way so um but you know the, one size does not fit all let me just say that yeah, yeah 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 and shout out to um carol rollins there who just said um four wives we're not we're not in the bible <laughs> <laughs> that 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 one made me me chuckle but guys what what's your opinion it's got talk. I've, we, um, some of you have read the book. You're aware of the, the, the languages of love. We put the questionnaire out there last week as well. I don't know if you guys have had a chance to do the questionnaire and find out what is your language of love. And I'll, more, more, more importantly, what is your opinions on Ace's language of love? Number seven, sex. Do you agree? Hmm. Yeah. Do you, do you agree whether it should be put into the love languages? I think... For me, I'm not saying it shouldn't be. I'm saying that I think that the other languages of love are the foundation into that, in my mind. Because it, I think that, in my mind, I'm thinking about sex in terms of a long-term, meaningful, loving relationship. It's not just a one bam, thank you, ma'am, or just a, a little something, something, uh, you know, a, a booty call or, or any of those things. And if that's where you're at, I am not, I am not saying that there's anything uh, uh, bad about that. That's where you're at. That's your choice, and and be happy where you are. But I'm just saying, in my mind, the others, the other languages of love, feed into. That. I would I would 100% agree with you on that note, and especially when you start going into things like intimacy. Mm. You know, to really get. And I like the way you put it, to get intimate with that person. They have to kind of understand you and know you. And I definitely feel that the other languages help anybody understand anybody better. You know, a man understand a woman, a woman understand a man. You know, so I think that I would agree with, I would agree with you. You can, you can have, like I said, sex mm -hmm. without the others. But that usually is not, it doesn't, it's not sustainable for very long. It's, no. it usually, it's just lust, mm. you know, but when you're talking about deep, meaningful relationships, you need to have the relationship as well yeah. as the, the intimacy. They, they, they do come in hand in hand. And I do believe it is, there's no one without the other. And I like the way you highlighted earlier that you can't have just the sex mm. without the relationship. Mm. The relationship is as important mm. it is i i think that the re you know if you if you look at it from that perspective of here's the relationship and you're you know you're on a journey you know you can have many liaisons mm -hmm. without uh, and when i talk about liaisons i mean sex without actually having any feeling any tie to that person but once you become intimate and this is this is the issue, and I, I don't want to go off script, but this is the issue as to why many have relationships that start off as one night stands, booty calls, friends with benefits, and why one always wants more than the other. Because the level of intimacy that one is having in their own mind is not the same as the other person. Brilliant, absolutely brilliant point there. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely brilliant point there and why is that because intimacy means different things to different people 
and when we talk about intimacy, we're talking about language number seven. This is this is this is where I wanted to. That was that's brilliant. So, sis, can we just rewind, pull up, pause, and hit that with hit them with, hit them with that one again because I don't want that to go over their heads. Mm -hmm. What you just said there, you talked about like some people can be having one night -like stands or mm -hmm. relationships and. One person mm -hmm. in that relationship yeah. wants more than the other because they're having an intimate relationship with that person, but that person isn't having an intimate relationship with them. And that's because? That is because... Intimacy means different things to different to people. Different people. Yeah. So even when I talked about connection mm -hmm. over lust, Mm -hmm. Yeah, because like I said, I I I I, I, I sat there anyway. So I'm going to talk about sex as the language of love, but I started to dissect it mm -hmm. into different it, it, you can, compartments. And you, you look at the intimacy, you look at lust, mm -hmm. and that's a that's a classic right there. Mm -hmm. That one person could be feeling quite intimate, and for the other person, it was just it's just lust. It was just lust. Yeah. This happens a lot. Of course, it does. It happens a lot. And this is why it needs to be spoken about. Mm -hmm. Because people ha communicate that language completely differently. Mm -hmm. you know, on that note, I just want to read one of the comments that um, coming in from Carol. Yeah. Carol, my darling, um, one of our regular viewers, um, shout out to you. I don't know if you joined the conversation late today or you've just been a bit quiet, sweetie. But she says, sex is important, but not as important as friendship, re um, respect, etc. Sex comes into it when... Um, when, when you have understanding. Now, at the very beginning, I, I gave this analogy that well, was an analogy. I gave <clears> a story of a friend of mine who has been married for 27 years, and after 14 years, sex didn't become as important for his wife as it still remained for him. And I, I started my show by highlighting this because I'm speaking for a lot of men when I say that. For a lot of men, sex is important continually throughout the relationship. It's important at the beginning, it's important at the, in the middle, and it's important at the end. And I think that it's important when you're get, if you're looking to get into a long-term relationship with somebody, you understand what their sexual behaviour is like. You know, are they someone that is quite sexually active? Are they someone that is quite sexually adventurous? Because we talk about harmony and we talk about being in synergy yeah. with your partner. And I think to acquire the, the, the most harmonious, synergetic relationship, you need to kind of be on the same page in yeah. all areas yeah. of language. Yeah, you need to be on the same page or at least be willing to accept the other person's view. Yeah, so you have to be on board for that to happen. I would say definitely, hmm. but just to come in to to, to so so yeah so sh I'm sorry to I didn't mean to cut you I apologise my darling sorry I just saw Carol say yeah she did come in late so she missed the beginning right um yeah um but yeah so you were saying that's fine I was just going to say in terms of what what Carol was saying it, she's right um in terms of you know there are other things respect all of those things are more important but what we find nowadays especially nowadays is that people are having sex before they're even forming a relationship. And the relationship is, a lot of the time nowadays, the relationship is actually based on the sex rather than the other way around. That's very, very, very true. Right. Yeah, that's very true. And I like the fact that you said that. People are having sex before forming a relationship. And a lot of relationships are formed off the back of the sexual encounter as opposed to building a relationship first mm -hmm. and then um, working up towards the, um, the, 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 the the more intimate side of it. Yeah. I remember, I think it was on last week's show, one of our guests made reference to the fact, and I also then commented and made reference to that, the best relationship I ever had started off as a friendship first mm. yeah like the best relationship i ever had started off as a friendship first and it was and then i think those are the best relationships the ones that you, you you connect with people on all types of levels and then move into int intimacy mm. as opposed to just 
I mean, don't get me wrong. We're all guilty. Well, I won't even call it guilt. We're all human beings, okay. and it's not. And we do. We can see somebody, and you can't fancy them. I think, oh, I'm like you, know? I'm like how you see a pillar. There's nothing wrong with that because mm -hmm. it's part of being human. Mm -hmm. But it's just being mindful that we, we're not all relationships are constantly just f formed on a lust, lust, yeah. lust bedroom thing, mm -hmm. and it's more based on the fact that um, there's other, like you said, do you build in a relationship first? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Come on. yeah. Come on. Okay, so so you're absolutely right there, Ace, in terms of, you know, when we are as humans we're just going about with connecting with people and we're not really thinking about the long term effect of the relationship. And this is why we are doing these shows. This is why we started with love languages, because it's so important, it's such a foundation for us to move on, for us to do things, for us to grow and develop in our relationships as human beings, you know? I know that um, we've got many people uh, messaging and, and <laughs> there are lots and lots of questions and we do want to get through some of them. But I just want to say that, you know, if you, if you find yourself um, at this current moment in a relationship or, going, or you're in that relationship with somebody and it's not based on friendship, it is based on sex, and you want to change that, I'm going to say to you to do this. I'm going to say to you to really have an open and frank conversation with yourself first. Find out your why. Why do you want this to be more intimate? Why do you want this to be more deeper? Why do you want the, the, you know, your vibrations to be higher? And if you come up with good reasons and you think, yeah, this is what I want, this is who I want to be with, then I would say to take the chance and okay, talk to that person. Okay. Um, just um, to read out some of the comments on the um, on the on the media live net feed, there was a comment coming through. Um, Stunt Legacy. He's made two comments. Um, I I I didn't I didn't really address the first one, but I'm gonna I'm gonna address this one. Um, um, the first comment. The but um, I I believe I believe you must be a man by the way you're talking. Can you confirm? But the first comment Stunt made was in relation to, he said that if he's in a relationship with somebody and they're not, he's not getting sex, he's going to look elsewhere. And I thought I'll ignore that comment because we, we had too much of a flow going on um, to really break that comment, to, to break the flow to, to mention that. But now the same person has made reference to the fact that if I'm getting into a relationship slash marriage, it's like a contractual agreement to exclusivity, a, um, a partner denying sex from another is breach of contract. So I'm going to address that. So like I said, I believe it's a man, just by the way you're speaking, but I could be wrong. doesn't matter. Either way, if it's a man or woman, it, it remains the same. What I'm going to say to you is this. You're going to need to probably follow the love zone for the next 12 episodes or, or so because you've got a lot to learn about relationships and if you think for one minute that because you're in a relationship with someone that other person is obliged to give you sex at your beck and call you obviously don't understand relationships and you really need to go back over the whole thing about love languages and communication because when you do understand relationship, anyway, I'm not going to go into too much of that now, but I don't, I disagree with you. Um, and I don't believe, I don't think that, and I would disagree with you. I don't, it, it, even if you're in a marriage, yeah, you still, um, even, in a, even if you're married to a woman, um, or it doesn't mean they, they are obliged to give you anything sexually. I disagree with you. That's not right. And you, you, I think you just need to really watch our show and understand that it's all about communication. And the more you communicate and under, get to understand that person on, on a level is the more I think you'll find that people will be more forthcoming with yourself. Um, did you want to um, pick that up? Yeah, I want um, to, before, before we end I'm the show, because, you know, time I'm is here, coming. Yeah, time is going. Mm -hmm. But I do want to... To, to address that, mm -hmm. um, Ace, because, you know, the, the words contract for me, like, it's like a red flag for me. Yeah. It, you know, marriage is more than a contract. Marriage is a yeah. union. Yeah, it's a union. And, it, and it's, it's a harmonious, it's a sanctimonious, it's, 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 it's a great institution. And so just from the language on what's been written for me, um, 
I would say you've given the right advice. That the person who is here t to listen to the show and learn more and be more open um, with your partner, you know, in that sense. I'm going to send over to you, babe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Um, Stunt Legacy says it goes both ways. Um, I'm, I think you must be referring to the um, the intimacy, but um, like I said, I think my point still stands, and I think you've got a lot to learn in regards to relationships. Mm. Um, we're I'm I'm mindful that we're coming to very rapidly to the end of the show. Yeah. Um, do you want to tell them a little bit about dilemmas, guys? Di do you want to tell them about dilemmas yeah. and then tell them what we've got coming up next week? Yeah. Um, what we would like you to do is to send in some information. If you have a dilemma that you would like us to talk on, um, we would like you to email us at... Info at realtalkradio.co.uk. Just, um, just um, in the subject, just put Yvonne and Ace dilemma and then put your dilemma in and we will address it. We, we, we had a conversation earlier about this and we want to keep everybody's anonymity mm -hmm. intact. So we're going to treat all dilemmas as anonymous, unless you personally request that you would like, you know, you know us, us to re read name. out your name and mm -hmm. give you a shout out. But other than that, just send us a dilemma, you know, and we will do endeavour to help you. One thing I want to point out as well, um, it was interesting when Yvonne shared the story earlier about her uh, friend who, you know, went to the, had problems in his relationship, because at the end of the day, it's about helping, it's about helping relationships mm. and, you know, helping people out. And it was interesting, Yvonne mentioned the friend that had problems in a relationship and when they went to the doctors, they suffered from diabetes. Now, that is something that is quite common you know, um, and more and more people are suffering from diabetes, and there could be um, a man, you know, out there who's watching this problem um, show that has been having some libido problems and isn't even aware that you know diabetes is the um, cause of it. So we've got um, one of our regular listeners online. His name he goes by the name of Lyndon Whitsat, and he's the inspired diabetic, and he's written a book, How to Turn Around Type Two Diabetes in 105 days. So, Lyndon, if you could drop a, um, a link to where um, the viewers can purchase a copy of your book in the comments below, that would be really, really ap appreciated. Yvonne? Yes. Uh, that good call, actually. Lyndon is, is a great guy. Just so now we're coming to the end of the show. So, before we go, what I would like to remind you to do is to subscribe to the channel. That's one thing. Two, share 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 and tell your family your friends and loved ones all about this show if you, like we said if you have a dilemma we would like to help you we'd like to help you move you forward in your relationship so if you do have a dilemma do send us an email and we're going to have a, a small section of the show where we will be able to answer some of your questions brilliant brilliant yeah. brilliant 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 so then Ladies and gentlemen, been quiet tonight on the comments, unusually, you know, usually get, but um, yeah, don't forget to share, share, um, on, share on your Facebook, share on your um, feed. We're going to be back next week at the same time, 8 p.m., and we are going to continue to the, the conversation on love languages and the relationship. When I say love languages, we, we, we've, we've covered all seven yeah, now, but we're going to come next week with a new topic. Um, Everyone hates me telling you what's coming up, but I have to tell you this: we have got a, we have got a, a sex doll that we want to bring on the TV at some point. Uh, I'll bring on here as, 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 as a guest, right? I'm saying let's bring him next week. Let's bring him next week. But everyone's not ready for that yet. You're right? she's too too. You you you're not finished with him yet because the male one as well. It's at, if it's at Vaughn's house as well, you know, yeah, right? You're, you're not, not finished. You're not finished with the doll yet. yet. Yeah, <laughs> right. So we're gonna get we're gonna get um we're gonna get the dolly on the show um in a couple of weeks. Yeah. And we've also um it's really exciting. Um, I was FaceTiming Yvonne the other day, and she showed me her little bag of tricks, didn't you? Yeah. And um so that's really exciting if one's going to be bringing on a bag of tricks we're going to be talking about that and as i said to you guys um <laughs> pre uh, over the last couple of weeks since this pandemic yeah the the sale of sex toys has gone up by 70 percent 
someone's buying them. You know what mm. I mean? So all of that and more. We're going to be just talking about that and more. Join us next week. Um, a Scott Talk and the Royal Empress Yvonne Michelle. Media Net Live TV, 8 p.m. Until then, stay blessed. Salute. Ciao.